um, I would like you to welcome you to JITOA's uh, webinar on the North American market. Um, on behalf of JITOA Board of Directors and the Executive Director, um, thank you for being here and we'd like to thank our uh, speakers today uh, for their time uh, and effort. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Malia Asfour, uh, the Jordan Tourism Board North American Office Director. Um, who is going to give us an update on the American market and um, the work that the JTBNA has been doing in the past period with the post-COVID or within the COVID uh, situation. I would like also to introduce Mr. Terry Dale, uh, the president of the U.S. Tour Operators Association, who is going to give us a perspective of a tour operator on um, the future of travel and how things are going to look uh, with the situation we are currently in. Um, with us, uh, a lot of JITOA members, the Jordanian community, and uh, some from the U.S. And uh, uh, for a quick order of uh, the day today, we're going to start with a presentation by Malia, followed by another one by uh, Terry Dale, and then we will have an intervention uh, by Dr. Talib Rifai, followed by questions and answers. I would like to ask you all to keep your uh, mics on mute so we can allow our speakers to uh, have the opportunity um, to uh, give us their presentations in full without interruption. And uh, afterwards, uh, please feel free to send us all your questions on the chat. We will compile them and we'll direct them on your behalf to our speakers at the end of uh, the presentations. So um, with this, I would like to give Malia the floor uh, to start, please. Malia? Yeah, hi. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning uh, to those of us in North America. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me put on my screen. Can you see the screen, Lina? Uh, yes. Are we in? Yes, you're in. Exactly. Great. So thank you, everybody, for, for joining us today. Um, uh, thank you, JITOA and the Board of Directors of JITOA. We really appreciate it. Uh, Omar, Lina, Aouni, thank you so much. Um, I also need to thank my friend Terry and Peggy for agreeing to be with us today and giving us some insight uh, for the Jordanian sector and to my team members and Samir specifically, who helped me put all of this together and has been the coordinator with Ahmad on everything. So thank you all so much. We appreciate you being here. Our, our vision for today is to just give you an insight on what we're learning and what we have in the market um, and, and maybe some also insight in how to prepare to uh, uh, be able to bring back this specific market. So uh, this is kind of our agenda and I'm going to start with um, some of the shifts in the travel behavior that's happening. Um, this is not new news to you, I'm sure, but things that you need to probably want to think about. The behavior for uh, North American travelers has changed forever, probably, until things become normal again, whatever the new normal is going to be. So we need to start thinking about how health and hygiene will be our competitive edge, how what we do with health and hygiene is going to be different than others that's going to give us that star uh, situation where we're, people are going to want to come to Jordan because of the way we've managed the situation. Um, we need to start looking at uh, uh, the, the DMO, which is the destination marketing organization that JTB is, as also a management organization to reduce over tourism and to manage social distancing. What are the pieces that we're gonna be putting in place as JTB, as Ministry of Tourism, as JITOA to help bring these markets back um, in terms of social distancing and the management of the crowds. Um, we expect consumers to seek out more off the beaten path experiences, uh, looking at private accommodations, adventure activities, open air, outdoor surroundings, um, we expect there to be increase in meaningful travel and local experiences and a movement to a lower, slower pace of travel. Uh, sustainability in this market tends to continue to be a key factor and very a big interest. 
And uh, we've noticed that there's interest in like-minded or very niche-driven experiences, such as bird watchers wanting to go bird watching together, or uh, small religious groups wanting to go do religious tourism together. So there's these smaller pockets of very small niche markets that also uh, might be a driving force for us to be able to look at. We have done, uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we wanted to bring you some research that has just been uh, conducted in the market here to give you perspective. So to a, a, like an OTA that pulls in tour operators from North America, as well as Jordanian tour operators that are members of Tour Radar. And they have uh, some consumer insights that they have just pulled together for us. And we wanted to share some of the slides of, of this because the response is pretty interesting from a consumer perspective. So um, some of the key findings uh, for, from the Tour Radar uh, uh, survey is that 30% uh, of the participants were optimistic about, optimistic about traveling internationally in 2020, mainly in the fall winter season. That could be pushed depending on how the pandemic proceeds in the fall. 33% uh, feel more cautious and hope to travel after March 2021. And the most important milestone to occur before Americans are ready to travel again are how the government allows travel and borders uh, open. So the bilateral agreements between governments and, and, and coordination on opening borders. Uh, how uh, organizations say it's safe to travel, so UNWTO, WHO, uh, looking at their guidelines and the procedures, as well as your own Ministry of Health, and a cure treatment is widely available, which is not something new, but it kind of puts it in perspective. Uh, the key findings were that North American travels would prioritize destinations where there is a slowdown of COVID-19 cases, which Jordan has done a really good job at doing. There's mandatory hygiene practices are, that are enforced, i.e. wearing masks, sanitizing hands, et cetera. And there's adequate health care available in the country. Uh, they will now expect that travel companies offer free date changes or ability to receive a voucher credit, um, mandatory health assessments of all travelers on site prior to travel, and not needing to share accommodations with people outside their parties. They all want to, if anyone's traveling together, they're going to stay together in this bubble, basically. 91% of the this travel audience is interested in taking a multi-day tour after COVID-19. 64% are most interested in embarking on guided group experiences in their next multi-day tour, and 54% would prefer travel in small private parties, groups of up to 10 people. So these are, um, this shows you the, the, the breakdown. Uh, the 30% of the participants are optimistic about traveling internationally uh, in the fall and winter. So this is your 33% over here. Um, and then if you look at the, the chart on, the, on my right, uh, it's the older traveler is more likely uh, to travel later than the younger traveler. So when you start thinking about your marketing, and thinking of the phases in your marketing and how you're going to attract your uh, consumers in the North American market, you might want to look at this kind of shift that's happening because we used to focus on the baby boomers and now maybe we need to skew a little younger and then move uh, towards an older audience. Uh, what are your biggest concerns about traveling internationally this year? And the, as you can see from here, it's uh, having restricted mobility, i.e. being uh, quarantined or stuck in the destination, is a more frequent concern than long-term health, which was very interesting uh, from that perspective. So uh, when you look at this, the, the, uh, the least worry was the expensive uh, COVID-19 treatment abroad and the most concern was getting quarantined. And so we need, to, in our communication strategy, we need to be very smart about how we put out the information on Jordan. Uh, which of the following events must happen first before you decide to resume any international travel? So you don't want to travel until, you know, the government allows borders to open, health organizations say it's safe, there's a cure treatment, et cetera. 
So in order to resume international travel, we will need to look at large scale signs of improvement, you know, government health organizations deem it safe to travel as opposed to waiting on personal conditions to improve. Uh, so I think here that this, uh, this allows us to, to look at where Jordan is and what we've done and we've done a really good job. So I think we have uh, some competitive edge that we can move forward on when you look at these kind of statistics. Uh, think of whether COVID influences uh, which travel destinations would you prioritize and travelers will prioritize destinations that demonstrate they can handle COVID-19 well, which is something that we've done an extremely good job as again. And so we need to be able to communicate this out. Um, we need to know, you know, health cleanliness certification is required by local businesses was the top aspect in the one, in, one, in, one through four on this list. Uh, and uh, this is in line with everything that we keep hearing in terms of wanting outdoor opportunities, uh, making sure that uh, the hygiene practices are being enforced, uh, but also knowing that there is a, a hierarchy in terms of what is the most and what is the least important to some of the travelers. We also looked at some survey results that uh, the Matador uh, network uh, had just recently done. And uh, this is the Matador Network we've done a lot of uh, joint marketing uh, efforts with and they've lots of videos and, and, and consumer outreach. And so their, their readers and followers are very avid travelers. And so we looked at some of the results of their recent survey and what they were saying is the anticipation of the return to travel the 89% of respondents plan to travel within six months or less once it is deemed safe. So as you can see from this chart, it helps, oops, it helps when you, uh, to, to look at this from in terms of, okay, once it's deemed safe to travel to Jordan, what, you know, what is, what are the things we need to put in place and how do we get through to the one to six months, you know, how do we start planning forward, moving forward. Uh, future travel behavior we looked at and the key takeaways here was 71% of the travelers are looking beyond their home uh, uh, state or province for their next trip. Nearly half, which is 49% plan to travel by air, while 40% plan to drive. And if you look at the uh, international uh, uh, travel on the, uh, the chart on the left, it's pretty high and after the staying national or staying domestic. So, um, and it's higher than the regional travel. So this gives me sign of, some signs of hope. And if you look at the screen on the right, it shows you how air travel is quite high. So, so um, I think there's some optimism in these, uh, these statistics, at least by these avid travelers. Um, we wanted to share with you a little bit about what we are doing here at JTBNA um, in terms of our communication plan uh, and our strategy throughout COVID. Um, and so uh, we have updated a travel resource page on our website and we have initiated and continuously daily update COVID pages on uh, uh, the JTBNA DNA website. So on uh, myjordanjourney.com and on visitajordania.com for, for the Mexican market. So every time there is any news on the pandemic, where, how it relates to travel to Jordan, uh, anything to do with Jordan, we update this material on a daily basis. Um, and all the SOPs, everything is on there uh, that you can use to send out to your clients. We um, have updated all our media outreach and uh, we want we have one team member who is talking to the media daily um, we uh, have segmented all our database and we pick 10 uh, companies or 10 media outlets or tour operators or travel agents every day and we go after we, we call them we touch base with them we update them on everything to do with jordan and we have dedicated news letters that go out just to the media and then with the tour operators and uh, we continue with our outreach and our education 
we're constantly in touch with them. We're up, we have updated a lot of their websites, a lot of their information on Jordan. Um, we also are working very diligently with our travel advisors in our uh, CRM system. We have updated our uh, educational course on Jordan and uh, our course on Jordan is a certified course. So any travel agent that is needing to update their certification, they can take one of uh, our courses and be updated into their certifica certification process. Um, we started uh, some consumer social media campaigns using hashtag my Jordan journey and hashtag my reflections of Jordan. Um, and we've also uh, relaunched the faith market website, holyjordan.com. Uh, holyjordan.com is part of the My Jordan Journey microsite, but it will be very dedicated only to the faith-based market in North America. Uh, we have a weekly newsletter that we send to you. Uh, we hope you get that and read that. That is an update on what's happening in this market. We try to get, give you as much detail as possible. If you are not on the mailing list, please let Jaitoa or JTV know and they'll be add, they'll add you to the mailing list. Um, but this is hopefully helpful to all of you as you start to think of how to uh, uh, look at destinations who are coming back and destinations who have fallen backwards and give you insight and market intelligence uh, that could be helpful to you. Ooh. Um, we also started something called Destination Task Force um, here and where we meet every Wednesday evening a group of destinations together and influencers in the travel industry. Um, and this has ex been extremely helpful in the market intelligence on what's going on with different destinations in the market, the best practices, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what we need to do to adjust uh, and then all that information is sent to you in our weekly newsletter. So hopefully that's helpful. I continue to serve with Terry on the uh, Board of Directors of Tours and Cares and uh, the Meaningful Travel Map of Jordan tends to continue being one of the top things that we've worked on. We are also working on a Meaningful Travel Map uh, with Colombia and using a lot of the Jordan best practices in Colombia. So, Needless to say, uh, this team here is, uh, we meet every day at 10 a.m. We talk about all the different things that we're doing today and we all have, everybody's been working since the pandemic started. Nobody's taken any time away from that. But we, to, our, our goal is to keep Jordan top of mind in the, eyes of the ma uh, in the eyes of the trade, the media, the consumer through all the different uh, activities that we can do in terms of our communication strategy. The one thing that, that, that we all know and we've all done and that can continue to be an ongoing trends for us, which is available in Jordan is, and it hasn't changed, is that the you know, travelers that are interested in our part of the region uh, really want to access local experiences. We have that. We have the trails and the active experiences, so we hope that you're promoting those. Uh, you know, open air and nature, we have plenty of that. We are an open air museum. Um, but the thing that I really want you guys to think about is the meaningful travel, sustainability, and immersive experiences with local communities. If you don't have those in your itineraries, please think about putting them in your itineraries because that's what the tour operators here are focusing on, that's what they want. They want smaller groups, smaller numbers of people doing something very meaningful and very immersive. Uh, they're interested, as you know, in remote unconventional experiences, which we easily can give. Wellness and spirituality, we have plenty of. And uh, the like-minded passion traveler, you know, the bird watcher, the hiker, the spirituality person, we have all of this um, and we're blessed with it. And so I think we have an opportunity to be able to be one of these destinations that bounces back uh, first. But in order to do that, we have to be prepared. And in order to be prepared, we have to be really good at communication. And so what, I, what we were thinking about when we put this presentation together is what is it that's being communicated by JTB and by JITOA and by you as, as the travel trade. 
you know, are you communicating the SOPs of your own organization and of the countries? Have you trained your guides and staff on health and hygiene issues? If you have, what are they? What are the health and hygiene standards that are in Jordan right now? Um, what are your what are your refund policies? Will you travel? Will your travelers have to sign waivers? What are their policies on that? You know, um, and what are your partners? You what are you communicating to your partners? Are you communicating the information on what you're doing with regards to training and continued education and updates on your team and guides and bus drivers, etc.? What new itineraries have you developed? Are you uh, sending local domestic tourism highlights and feel good stories to your clients? Uh, are you messaging and support, you know, of consumer confidence and public perception? Your support of meaningful travel. What are your sustainable tourism strategies for your company? Are you sending that to your uh, partners in North America so that they can see what you're doing? And I think this is the if we work together, get together better on our communication with our partners and of what's happening in Jordan, I think that gives us that competitive edge that we have uh, been asking for and that we need. Um, and I just want to talk more about the power of partnerships. We have been members of USTOA since I think 1998. <laughs> and I've attended almost every conference, which of course ages me. Um, we've been sponsors for, as you know, a long time. I have been blessed and served on the associate board of uh, USTOA. And I currently chair, co-chair the Destinations with Destinations, uh, for Destinations program. But also USDAOA has been a great partner of ours. Um, Terry has been a keynote speaker at our Travel Mart. We've had, uh, uh, Terry has always been, does anything he can to help us. And if I to help during the Arab Spring, Terry jumped on that and helped me put that together. And Terry was with us at Tourism Cares uh, with Jordan. And so there's this constant partnership that goes both ways and where I'm very blessed to call Terry my friend. And I'm so excited um, that he can be with us today and that he can give us um, some updates and, and, and points on the uh, latest developments of what's happening uh, in North America when it comes to the US tour operators and their thought process. So I hope my presentation was helpful in just giving you some perspective. Um, and now I'll shift to Terry and then we'll be back for Q&A. So Terry, thank you. And um, I think Summer's gonna take over on the slide side of things. Thank you, Malia. That was very insightful. Terry? Can you unmute your microphone, please? All right. Can you all hear me? Yes. Can hear yes. you well. All right, great. Um, you know, I don't know where to start uh, because I honestly feel that um, I'm coming to a family dinner table with all of you. And, I, and, and, and I'm being honest because I, I'm bad with years, but I went uh, to Jordan when I was CEO of CLIA and talked about the cruise industry. And that was probably 15, 16 years ago. And Jordan has been present and has been such an incredible partner to not just tour operators, but the cruise industry and all the different segments of travel. Uh, so for me, this is like, I feel like I'm coming home <laughs> and I get emotional these days, I apologize. But I think it's important for us to stress the value of partnership. And it's that partnership that will get us through a crisis like this. So first and foremost, thank you for spending time with us uh, today. 
uh, allowing me just to kind of update you on where we are at USTOA. And uh, just to reassure everyone that we're going to get the U.S. traveler back to Jordan. We are. Uh, I, I, I do not question that one bit. So just a, a quick snapshot of USTOA, and I apologize for those of you who have heard this before, but currently we have 50 corporate members. Those 50 corporate members own and operate 147 different tour operator brands. In addition, we have over 600 supplier members that we call associate members of which you folks have been <laughs> with us, by us, supporting us uh, for decades. So, so we thank you for that. I, I do want to show you, and we can go to the next one, that we have 45 of our, our corporate members that have product in uh, Jordan. Now, we need that product to come back. <laughs> you know, obviously when I say we have product, um, but today things um, are not running. And then we also have as our associate members, and we can go to the next screen here, we have nine of you who are associate members uh, and we thank you for your support because you're critical in how we create the experience for the US traveler. So one of the things that sets us apart is this program called the $1 million Traveler's Assistance Program, which many of you have heard about time and time again, but that's each of our corporate members has to set aside a million dollars, whether it's through a treasury bond or a letter of credit that we hold at USTOA in case they would cease operations, then we would provide the customer with the ability to recover a deposit that they may have had on hold with that particular USTOA member. And this program is unique uh, to, I think, any other global uh, travel association, but it's a way for us to hold ourselves at a higher level uh, and expectation uh, for USTOA members. I want to also share with you in a traditional year, which we're not in a traditional year, but just briefly about our economic footprint, which we established through PricewaterhouseCoopers. So they told us in 2018 that we're a $19 billion industry. We go to every corner of the world. We are predominantly outbound and less domestic, um, which is good for, good, good for Jordan. And if we move on to the next slide, we see that we serve roughly nine and a half million travelers. Again, those are primarily US travelers going overseas. Then our members on the next slide, you'll see, we purchase roughly $13 billion of goods and services. And when we break that down, the next screen will show you that we are, are filling 20, one million hotel room nights. And, and to me, uh, when I ran NYC and Company, which was New York City's tourism board before the cruise industry, I always said, keep our hotels full and we keep our jobs. So, so that $21 million or 21 million hotel room nights, we need to make sure that Jordan is getting your fair share of those hotel rooms, because that then can translate to eating in restaurants, uh, going out and experiencing um, what Jordan has to offer. And then when we look at the impact on airlines, it's roughly 6 million airline seats are being filled. So that's just a, a quick snapshot of our kind of economic footprint that we are having globally. So if we move on, we always want to find out from our members what are they creating as far as product uh, from an experiential perspective? And for the first time, art and culture actually rated number one. Um, not surprising, um, multi-generational uh, adventure, honeymoons, um, romance, all of those have traditionally been at the top, but we, for the first time, saw old art and culture um, come out at number one. And I think that bodes well uh, for Jordan. So if we then uh, move on to our next, I think it's important to share with you 
the surveying that we're doing of our members during this pandemic. And be, before I even touch on the two bullet points that you see here, I think it's important to share that we learned back in May that 57% of all business on the books of USTOA members for 2020 had been successfully transferred to 2021. So we're moving into the next calendar year with a fairly decent base that was willing to you know, move their booking to the next calendar year. So I, I, I think that's encouraging. And I think in this day and age, we're all looking for you know, uh, some way to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I think that we've got some of that showing and shining through uh, right now. Um, so on this screen here, we have seen that um, half of our members have bookings for the first quarter of 2021. And these, I should mention, these are new bookings. And then three-fourths of our members have new bookings for the second quarter of 2021. So all of this is indicating that there is definitely interest. And, and we talk about pent-up demand. There will definitely be pent-up demand. But one of the things that Malia touched on and that we all have to address is how our governments work together uh, on a bilateral platform, allowing US travelers to go to Jordan and vice versa. And, and that's something that every day I speak with our lobbying firm in Washington, DC, um, and we reach out to different embassies and consulates about how do we start as a travel industry engaging uh, and, and communicating to our customer base so that we can get out of this pandemic and this crisis sooner rather than later. And I, I, I wish I had the answer for you at this moment, but I don't. <laughs> but I will share with you one of the steps that we took was to put together what we call tour care guidelines. So I reached out to the European Tour Operator Association and the Canadian Association of Tour Operators, two of our sister associations, and said, let's collectively create a baseline for our members to operate from. And, and this is all about education uh, for our uh, staff, this is about sanitation, and this is about shared responsibility. And I think that's one thing that I really want to stress is that as we create our communication strategies, this is a shared responsibility. It's, it's, it, it's a given that our members are going to work hand in hand with you as our partners in Jordan. But the piece that I, see, I, I feel sometimes we don't stress enough and we need to moving forward is that our customers, they have a responsibility. They have a responsibility to not only protect themselves, but protect those who are traveling with them. So this is kind of a trifecta. It's the tour operator, we're gonna do everything we can to provide a safe experience. And I know our partners in Jordan are gonna do everything they can but we need the consumer, the customer, to round out the trifecta and make sure that they understand the responsibility that they bear so that we can open up travel. So I, I, I think how we, how we communicate, and that's something that uh, Malia touched on, is critically important. We are all in this together, but it requires uh, us all to understand our respective roles in traveling internationally. Now, I just uh, wanna wrap up here with a, a couple of slides um, that we have from MMGY and TripAdvisor. And it talks about this one here in particular, safety, top of mind. And 65% of North American travelers will not travel unless they see physical change that makes them feel safe. Now, how you, how you define physical change 
is kind of like, how do you define adventure travel? How do you define luxury? It's all <laughs> interpreted individually. But we have to be able to communicate safety and health. And then the next uh, slide talks about um, when they looked at the US traveler, they weighted what was important. And obviously a country with a low number of reported COVID cases is more appealing. Jordan is a perfect example of that. They wanna see high engagement when it comes to hygiene. And then finally, they wanna avoid crowded spaces. So when you look at those three elements about a, a potential US customer, Jordan is in a really good position to connect with the US traveler. So I, I think there are many reasons to be optimistic, um, but we're all in this for the long haul. You know, I, I, I don't want to try and mislead you um, it's going to take time and it's going to take us working together. And we can go to that final image, Samer, uh, because um, in my home, I have this basket that I purchased uh, in Jordan, I don't know, three years ago, four years ago, from the uh, Jordan River Foundation, which is uh, a women's collective and they create baskets and rugs. Uh, to this day, I, I, I cannot forget about that experience. And I've had this basket uh, on the screen, it's been in my office, and then I've carried it to Brooklyn where I live, and I see and I remember that experience that Jordan represents. And I think this is what we've got to hold on to uh, as we go through this crisis, that it's whether I'm in Wadi Ram and I get a call from my sister-in-law say, oh, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in Wadi Ram right now. Or it's this basket that I purchased. These are the connections, these are the experiences that will get us through together. And I know we'll be stronger but it really sucks right now. I do know that. And I, I don't want to minimize the pain that we all feel, but we'll, we'll get through this. So with that, I apologize for rambling at the end, <laughs> but I have a lot of passion for Jordan. Thank you, Terry, very much. Uh, this was very, uh, very insightful and very heartwarming, in fact. Um, I just would like to remind everyone that you can leave your questions uh, on the chat section for us. In the meantime, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Talib Rifai and uh, Dr. Abdelazza Arabiyat, uh, who are with us on the chat. Um, and uh, we'd like uh, Dr. Talib, uh, I know you've raised your hand. We'd like you to add your insights as usual. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you so much. I want to start by thanking Terry for his passion about Jordan. I think we need to have more, more people like you around the world. Thank you so much. And thank you for Malia so for doing a great job there. My question to you, Terry, and to Malia as well, but to you, Terry, basically, is how realistic is it to have Americans, particularly American tourists, come to Jordan now? Not because of any technical reasons, but for political reasons. For example, is it possible now to compare two situations? You know, when, when, you have, when you have two destinations that want to connect with each other, you must have a direct contact, first of all. You do have a direct line contract, airline contract, contact from New York, from Chicago, and from Detroit. That's not a problem. But you have to have an agreement between the two on the procedures. Because nowadays, international organizations have proven to be completely irrelevant. It's up to the two countries together. Every two countries are doing a bubble here and a bubble there and a corridor in between. How realistic do you think this is going to take place between the US and Jordan now? It's my question to both of you. Terry? <laughs> well, it's, it's good to see you, Talib. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Terry. Uh, Thank you for asking the hardest question out there that 
I honestly don't have an answer to. Uh, as you know, we're less than 100 days out from an election. So yeah. a US election always impacts uh, travel. In, uh, in a traditional year, we would typically see soft travel during an election year. This is not obviously a traditional year, not only from the COVID-19 pandemic, um, but from the way we are divided as a country and the way that I think we are challenged in uh, fostering relationships with our international partners and let's say Jordan. So I, I don't have the answer or really um, a significant insight other than I do want to share with you and Malia and Sam are jump in here. Um, so we had a town hall call with our tour Good. operators and Good. yesterday. Yeah. And so then we reconvened after that town hall conversation and wanted to make sure we shared with you uh, some of the salient points. And I, I think some of this is, is encouraging for you folks. So the, the first thing that we learned from our tour operators is that they're seeing that people want to spend longer time in a destination or a country. When things open up, so, you know, in the past, we always talked about, you know, the, the typical U.S. traveler would want to package two, three countries in one experience yes. because we have limited time. Well, now I'm hearing, or we heard yesterday, that people want to stay in place. Yes. And, and have, have a deeper experience in a single destination or country. That's good news especially for a country like Jordan, I, I, I personally believe. Second, um, and this is maybe more Terry Dale speaking, it's, so I want to be careful not to, you know, translate it into our members, but I think we need to have value and um, don't get into discounting. I, I, I don't think we should just slash our hotel rates slash everything to try and stimulate demand. You have an amazing experience and a product in Jordan. I would maintain value integrity as we work our way through this process. And I, and like I said, this, this may be just- No, no, just, but that's very, very important. Thing. But I, I, I think let's not get into price slashing. Um, we've touched on the experience, which has been king for, you know, the last couple of years. But I think that what I'm also hearing more of, and we heard yesterday on this town hall call, was wellness. And wellness um, is going to be more important to travelers today. And, and, and that wellness touches sustainability and the experience and the product that we're creating and providing to not just the U.S. traveler, but all of the potential travelers to Jordan. And then the last thing I'll say, and I, I, I apologize for rambling here. No, no, not at all. Communicating. Uh, now is not the time to go quiet. Communication is critically important. Uh, communicating how things are on the ground in Jordan is critically important because I can't keep track of everything. We, we try, but the job that Malia and Samer and everyone does in communicating to our tour operators, our travel advisors in the North America market is so critically important. They are the ones in tandem with uh, tourism that will get us back to your country. So communication of a strong presence is, is really important. Now is not the time to go quiet or to go dark. Now is the time to really amplify your story. And, and, and you've got an amazing story. 
I apologize for rambling there. Not, not at all, Danny. Not at Those all. are all things that I, I also wanted to share that came out from yesterday's conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Malia, do you want to add something? If I could add, I think the, the, some of the competitive advantages we have is that we have direct flights and that uh, travelers don't want to stop in Europe to change planes. They want to go directly to the destination. So I think we have a, a, an opportunity um, to uh, really hone in on Royal Jordanian Airlines and, and fill those flights. Um, the issue of wellness also uh, came up yesterday and uh, the issue of mental wellness, the need for open spaces, the need to uh, uh, travel, the pent up demand for travel, but the, also the need for wellness. And I, I think about uh, uh, the Dead Sea and all that we have available there. I also think about the open spaces in Wajiram, in Kinan, the Jordan Trail, that these are things like, it's an opportunity for us to relook at our areas. The, the, the advantage that we have, I think, that now, more than ever before, is combined itineraries with our neighbors are probably going to slow down and standalone itineraries are going to beef up. So if you start looking at your standalone itinerary and start adding in meaningful you haven't and local experiences and, and giving space, I think you have an opportunity there to rebrand and relook at our, the different values that we have. Um, I think Okaba is going to become more important to us than it used to be before in the North American market because people want to do the adventure experiences that are available in Aqaba, for example, like scuba diving, but also be able to go to Wadi Rum. I think we have some, we have an opportunity right now with things slowing down to relook at some of our, our itineraries to enhance them for what the traveler is asking for. Does that help? Thank, thank you so much, Malia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malia. Thank you, Dr. Talib. Dr. Abdelraza Arabiyat, would you like to add Anything before we move on to the questions and answers session? Dr. Abed? Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, how are you? Uh, hello, Terry, Malia. Uh, um, actually, I was uh, uh, listening to Maria's presentation on Terry. And uh, just I want to add that um, we are really proud of our team in uh, uh, North America, JTB. Uh, nay. Um, the thing that I want to share with you, uh, I think uh, uh, we need to look into other uh, niches and segments. As I, I see in the chat box, one of the uh, our uh, colleagues talked about the film, uh, already the government issued the SOPs for the uh, film industry that they can come uh, in one group and and uh, choose Jordan as for filming. And another thing we can we can uh, uh, maybe communicate with the US market, the five budgets in North and South America, and the government already issued the SOPs uh, for the uh, private jets where they um, can be guaranteed for just 48 hours. Meanwhile, uh, since, as you heard, that we, the, the government already postponed the opening the airport due to the fact of the uh, pandemic situation in the, uh, many countries, and I think the U.S. market is still uh, in the uh, red zone. Uh, uh, but we need to, uh, as Maria said, we need to, to be engaged to keep uh, touch bases with our members, with the tour operators, to update them what's happening in Jordan and to just to tell our success story uh, share with them uh, what we are doing in terms of the, uh, uh, the and health and, and the situation in Jordan and just keep reminding them uh, about the country I'm sure they may I mean, hopefully next year maybe next March um, uh, things will will back uh, to normal uh, hopefully all the experts expecting that the vaccine will be uh, distributed worldwide so March next year will be. Dr. Abed, I think we lost you. Um, the, the gradually. Oh, sorry. Hello. Yes, yes. Can you hear We're me now? now? Yes. Okay. So we need just to keep in keep uh, uh, engaging and keep touch uh, touch bases with our members. 
and start to find uh, another alternatives in the US market, uh, and, and, and especially for the uh, niches like medical, wellness, uh, uh, I think we have some problem with the, with the communication on okay. the, the, the net. So maybe I can come uh, again, uh, maybe at the, uh, the end of uh, uh, this session, we, maybe we can, uh, uh, I can add some, some comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abed. Um, Allow us now to move on to the questions and answers. Uh, I'll start uh, uh, with the first question since Dr. Abbe touched on the different uh, subsectors and niche uh, tourism activities. So um, the first question would be from Shireen um, asking, how can we increase awareness about Jordan's success in medical tourism? Especially with, uh, there is no waiting time, high quality and great outcomes. Um, and some services are not in covered by insurance, such as dental, which is very cheap in Jordan compared to the US. So how can we um, benefit on the advantages we have in Jordan and promote them in the US? And I think the question goes to both uh, Terry and Malia from two different perspectives. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I would say, first of all, I'm not sure what kind of awareness our members have about the opportunity that exists in Jordan for medical tourism. Uh, maybe some are well aware, uh, maybe some aren't, but I would say our FIT operators, whether it's Avanti or some of the others, that's something that we need to start communicating. And, and, and personally, good to have that question raised because I'm not personally um, as aware as I should be, but that's something that um, I think we should definitely uh, make sure our members are aware of so that the, the traveler uh, knows that this opportunity exists. Malia? And I would add, I would add that um, we need our partners on the ground when they communicate with their USTOA members and other tour operators and agents to be able to also communicate directly about the different itineraries and the different medical uh, tourism processes that we have in the country to also help us. Because we can do so much, but we also need you to back us up in, in the process. So it's a, it's a dual communication situation. Thank you, Malia. Um, remaining in the same sphere, a um, question from Mona says, how enthusiastic is the USA market to travel for wellness and health reasons? For TripAdvisor, it was the number one choice of travel during COVID-19 in April, and most surveyed were ready for R&R and stress reasons. I, I think it's the number one reason for travel right now. Give me wide open spaces, and a place that I can breathe and exhale because I've been cooped up in a Brooklyn, New York City apartment for too long. And I think, I think everyone feels that way. So I, I do believe that the wellness, the health travel, that is really going to drive business uh, for the next couple of years. Malia, you'd like what to What we've add? also noticed is that Yes, yeah, mental, mental health um, is the number one um, factor for uh, the need for wellness. And um, as Terry was saying, what we're hearing here for mental health is wide open spaces, uh, being able to meditate, being able to be in a uh, in very spiritual kind of a being kind of place. Um, and so we definitely have, it doesn't mean medical, but mental health, you know, when you start thinking of mental health and what people are needing right now, um, we have been talking to our ambassador in Canada, because Canada is part of the green zone, about also reaching out to the Canadian health sector on the issue of mental uh, wellness and how we can infuse tourism to Jordan with regards to mental health, uh, mental health from the Canadian market. So, um, you know, what we need is information is power and, and as much information from you as possible. 
so that we can actually uh, be able to even offer more opportunities and itineraries to the, the operators who are dealing with all of these types of niche markets. But I also want to add, when you start thinking of niche markets, like Dr. Abed said, um, you know, what we're noticing, especially from the survey that the Adventure Travel Association did, is that um, there are these niche markets within niche markets. So when I mentioned bird watching, that is a huge community that travels together for a reason, go do something together. Um, so think about these niche markets within niche markets that we can also be able to go after because these are uh, markets that are itching to travel and they stay in small groups and they do like-minded things together. And so we have some of these opportunities for us to go after these markets. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I would like to also do a, a shout out to one of our USTOA members, which I typically don't do. <laughs> But I, I, I do want to um, take a closer look at Perillo Learning Journeys and Carol Demopoulos, who is the president of Perillo Learning Journeys, because she has been for, I don't know, five, six years focused on wellness. And, and Malia, I, I appreciate your, your point about mental health. Um, and, and so I do think that there's something there that is really uh, substantial and that we can all build as a niche, niche market because um, it, we all need it and, and Jordan's got it. So I, I think, you know, a company like Perillo's Learning Journeys and others um, can help you help us build that kind of travel. Um, thank you, both Malia and Terry. Um, sticking to the niche uh, um, questions, uh, so from Sahel Dudin, on the immediate term, I think Jordan is a perfect destination for the movies industry. Is that sector in America active, and are they traveling all over the world for their movies, and how can we promote Jordan for the movie industry on the immediate term? Well, uh, I'm hoping my friend Malia has has more information about this than I do. I will just say this. I saw a piece in the, the New York market about Tyler Perry, who has become, he's, he's built an empire around movies. Now, don't get me wrong. I've never seen one of his movies, but he's got an empire. He's doing all of his shooting, though, um, within his compound. And, and I don't even, I think it's in California, but I don't know. So my my gut tells me that the movie industry still has a ways to go in the recovery. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but um, Malia, do you, do you see and hear anything from that segment? So the movie, so the movie Dunes is coming out in December and that is absolutely humongous. It's as big as Star Wars. It's filmed in Jordan and we really need to capitalize on this. Unfortunately, our budgets are being cut, so uh, we're going to rely on you for information in Jordan to be able to put out. But this is an opportunity to set us apart um, and it's enormous. And film tourism is something we are pushing from here and capitalizing on as much as we possibly can. Um, but really start looking at Dunes and uh, the production of Dunes and um, the, the actors that are there and how we can take advantage of the, the actors there becoming uh, brand ambassadors for Jordan, how we can uh, utilize them in terms of helping us uh, uh, present this image of how we combated our uh, COVID and situation and, and, um, and moving forward. I think we have a huge advantage coming up for us that we really should be looking at right now. Great. Thank you, Malia. Um, so going into a bit more uh, of a general uh, uh, question, um, taking or looking at the numbers that you showed us before where uh, the expectations or, or the replies of uh, US travelers is that they will be traveling. Do you hear me now? 
هلا يس مليا دي هير مي يس وي دو وي دو وي هير يو مليا يو هاف ا جود كونكشن I didn't hear your question. Can you okay. ask it again? Sorry. So, yeah. um, based on the numbers you showed, international traveling is as uh, interesting for the American uh, travelers as domestic travel. So, um, when do you expect travelers, and the question comes from uh, Mr. Auni, when do you expect travelers from the U.S. to return back um, and uh, taking the 14-day quarantine, uh, as Isam says, for the U.S. travelers, what can we really do to expedite that? Well, if, if, if I were to take a stab at guessing, uh, everything that we're hearing is second quarter of 2021. Oh. So while, while some of our members have business on the books for the third and fourth quarter of this year, um, whether they can execute that remains to be seen and remains to whether countries have bilateral agreements to accept U.S. travelers or not. So I, I feel like everything I'm kind of hearing and seeing uh, is second quarter 2021. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Malia, anything we can do to expedite uh, or to, to change things, maybe in terms of communication or otherwise? So, yes. I mean, yes, communication is power and key, and, and our competitive edge is going to be communication and our communication strategies. And, you know, I'm happy to work with anybody on information that comes our way. Anything that comes our way, our team repurposes out. So we need information because that's power. That's number one. Number two is we are we still get requests. They're small, but we still get requests coming in uh, for the fall, and we get requests coming in for next week. It's very strange. The thing is, is is the bilateral agreement between Jordan and the U.S. What are the processes and procedures that we're going to put in place once the U.S. is deemed safe or Americans are deemed safe to travel? And are we going to look at pockets in the U.S.? New York has done a great job. Virginia has done a great job. Uh, there are other cities, states that have done a, a good job, but Florida has done a terrible job. So is, are we as Jordan going to open up green zones to specific areas in the United States, in this continent, or are we going to stay uh, close to, to, to the destination. So we have to collectively, as it, as the like uh, the Ministry of Tourism, think about this market because it's high revenue for us. And, and how do we open up the American market? Also, as, as Terry said before, it is an election year. Things in November could change everything. Typically in an election year for travel to Jordan, tourism goes down a little bit. Every election year, that's happened. So this election year could be, inshallah, a game changer for all of us, we're hoping, and um, could switch things around pretty quickly. If it does, we need to be ready. So I think we just, the, I think bottom line is we need to put all our ducks in a row. We need to be ready. So then when things start to open up, you have that one to six month opportunity to start pushing business at your partners. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think it does. I, I had a crazy idea. Can I share it with, with you? Of course. <laughs> Please. Like I think on everybody's mind now is Corona. And if we in Jordan start to promote the fact that we are a wellness destination, declare the Dead Sea area as an area where anybody can come, even if you have to spend 10, 12 days guaranteed, let it be in the Dead Sea. We could dedicate our medical efforts to try and get people better. Those that had the disease, that have recovered from it are plenty in the US. They could come to us. We could start promoting, targeting that, telling them, come to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is an area where you have maximum oxygen all over the world. We'll have dedicated doctors to do that. So the wellness, let's, let's not be ashamed of talking about Corona anymore. 
let's tell them, okay, you had a corona, we know that. It's okay. All those that had corona want to recover, come to us. And when you come here, you will be staying at the Dead Sea. 10, 12 days, packages could be designed in that regard. Packages with medical care to take care of these people. We've done a very good record in how many people have recovered from corona here. So instead of just promoting ourselves for a safe destination, we can promote the Dead Sea area in particular. as a destination where people can come here and be cured, feel better about themselves. I think that's a powerful message if we can handle it internally in Jordan. Thank you. It's a crazy idea, I know. But I think it's a brilliant idea, maybe. actually. No idea is crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I think it's Thank great. <laughs> Thank you. I totally agree. Thank you, Dr. Talib. Um, we have a comment from uh, Dr. Muhammad uh, about the online reputation management. Uh, he says it should be a priority for all parties involved in marketing Jordan worldwide. Tourists will pay more attention to all reviews and health protocols published on the web. Uh, Seventy-one percent uh, will read the web before deciding to visit or not. Jordan has done a great effort, but we need to build on it in a smart manner. So, um, if you have any comments on that, it definitely supports what you've been saying before. Well, I, I would say the doctor. <laughs> the doctor is spot on with that comment, um, and USTOA started a program. Uh, three, four years ago that Jordan has been uh, from day one part of our pilot program and that is the value of, of consumer reviews. You know, we have confidence in the experience that our USTOA members are providing the US traveler. So we want and we encourage them to share those responses and reviews online. So I, I think the more we can get that message out that people are having extraordinary experiences uh, in Jordan uh, is, is extremely positive. Malia? Okay. Um, so as, as you know, we've been uh, in my presentation, um, our uh, uh, websites are, have a COVID page on them. And those are updated daily. Um, so we agree. We also are working like with, uh, with Terry, with USGOA. They have uh, a, a whole page on destinations. And each destination has their COVID updates on there. And uh, that's linked to our website. So uh, we totally agree that, that the online reputation is key. And honestly, uh, our budget has been cut completely. So the only thing that we are working on diligently um, uh, on a regular basis is making sure everything with regards to the pandemic and what Jordan is doing is updated on a daily basis on the website. Great. Thank you, Malia. Um, before I give uh, Mr. Auni a closure note, uh, Dr. Abdurraza, you said you might have uh, something to add at the end before we close. Uh, yes, Lina. Uh, I think uh, we've been just discussing um, regarding opening the U.S. market. Uh, yes, marketing is very important, essential for the country. But since personally I've been uh, engaged and involved with opening the airports, the, the problem is how we can just unify the, the process, I mean, the, our procedures in Jordan to be accepted for the, for the US market. Uh, it's that accepted for them, assuming that the parameters, the requirements from our side, the quarantine uh, uh, days, uh, the, 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 the PCR test before 72 hours, all these things should be, I think, accepted from, from the US uh, government to allow their, their, their citizens to come to Jordan. This is the, the first step. I, I think we need to, the, the diplomatic channels to share with them uh, what we have, what is, what is required from our side, just to coordinate. Um, uh, this is very important. The other thing, uh, I think we, we need to, to work closely with the, um, uh, with the tour operators and to uh, support them once the, we open the Air Force and uh, once the Ministry of, of Health considered the US market as a green uh, destination so we can start uh, the, the, the flights, uh, direct flights from, 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 US, from USA to Jordan. 
uh, and I think we need uh, to work heavily uh, with the uh, the the uh, US two A the associations to support and to uh, uh, do some kind of co marketing to uh, encourage them to 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 for their clients to come to Jordan as a destination. And uh, again, since we just we need to keep. Uh, the engagement to keep to touch base with the 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 uh, our partners there, uh, reminding them. And I think Maria and the team is doing a great job and in, 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 in communicating and keep uh, online uh, communication with the, with our partners there. And once we open the airports, hopefully maybe you know, with the U.S. market, as as Terry said, maybe the first quarter of next year. Uh, so we already there. We can be disappeared. So we, we need to be uh, online engaged. And to feed them with the what's what's going on in Jordan, and share with them uh, the the new content, enhance our content, uh, upgrade the the uh, our our platforms, uh, and the so social media, and share with them success stories and lovely stories that we have uh, in Jordan. Uh, I think many products uh, in Jordan, and, the, and I think the our our tour operators uh, just uh, uh, redesign the packages, and and uh, I think the Corona period. Let them think again how to redesign uh, the, the the packages and the itineraries to cater for the needs uh, for the uh, uh, the uh, potential consumers. And uh, what we have, uh, I think, now a new uh, uh, kind of travelers, introvert travelers, uh, small groups. Uh, they have uh, uh, specific uh, preferences. And I think the, our tour operators, uh, the incoming tour operators are, uh, are uh, monitoring and evaluating and redesigning the packages that may um, uh, cater or, or satisfy the, the potential uh, consumer from, from the US market. Uh, I hope that uh, this will, 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 will happen quickly for the pandemic and to get rid of this uh, crisis as soon as possible. Um, hopefully by the end of this year, they will you know, provide or, or we have the vaccine and back to normal for, uh, the, the next year. Hopefully. Strani. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I agree with uh, what Dr. Abid said. We have to align our regulations through bilateral agreements with the countries involved once they become green. And then uh, after that, we will uh, go into the niche markets, like you stated, corona-free Dead Sea area or Aqaba or whatever, longer stays that will apply because the process is becoming more and more cumbersome now to travel. So I think it has to be, the trip had to be a standalone worthwhile uh, stay, uh, 10 days plus to, to make it uh, worth their efforts. So... I uh, commend, uh, finally, the efforts and the, of uh, JTB North America uh, with the, through the newsletter, Malia and her team. We are always uh, keeping abreast of the uh, changes, the happenings in the States, which is very good to be uh, always on top of things. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank every one of you, Dr. Talib, Dr. Abed, Terry, Malia, Lina, for uh, all of you sharing uh, such insightful information. And hopefully we can hear good news sooner than uh, the first quarter, maybe uh, uh, the fall of this year, if we are optimistic. Hopefully no recurrence will happen, uh, figures will go down, and uh, let's be uh, optimistic. Thank you very much, everybody. And we look forward to more uh, meetings and uh, uh, good news, always. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rauni. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Terry. Any final notes before we close this? Communication, communication, communication. <laughs> great, True. great. True. And experiences. Thank, Thank you. you all very much. Have a lovely day and a lovely afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you in the next uh, webinar. Take Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.